Good morning. Um, this is uh, June 1st, so we're getting into summer and uh, all new seasons. Uh, it helps to look back at, at other people and things they've done and um, to kind of learn from wisdom that maybe perhaps we can grow beyond that. Today I wanted to talk about Marguerite Porete. Uh, she was a Beguine martyr. Uh, Beguine, um, this is in the late 1200s, early 1300s. There were different groups of women that would get together, lay women, uh, but didn't take orders, but they basically devoted their lives to prayer. And out of these groups, there was a number of mystics, uh, people that just had these incredible encounters with God, and they would tell others about it and, and share that. Um, she writes this about the, her own writings, and she did write a book. Uh, the book's called The Mirror of the Simple Soul, and uh, kind of reflects uh, how we connect with God. Very good insight. But in her introduction, uh, she has an interesting quote here. She says, I beg you, those who read these words, try to understand them inwardly, in the innermost depths of your understanding, with all the subtle powers at your command, or else run the risk of failing to understand them at all. Now, these words of hers about her own writing will tend to be prophetic. But as it starts out, uh, somewhere around 1290, she wrote this book because she had been having these mystical experiences and wanted to share this with others. So she went around from town to town preaching and telling about how we can connect with God. And um, it was a wonderful type of uh, direct, direct uh, inner spiritual contact, but it led you out. But, but first of all, you kind of like took it in and absorbed God, and then you could express to others in a much more joy-filled way, which is really wonderful. Um, so as she goes doing this, this is pretty alarming at her time. Uh, the church, uh, uh, particularly a bishop, uh, she had given one copy to, I think it was in 1308, and he read this and said, oh, this is terrible. You're not doing everything by church doctrine. Uh, this is this is not okay. And she, he turns it over to the Inquisition. Now, remember at this time that the Inquisition was this incredibly powerful group that were trying to uh, keep everybody on the straight and narrow. And um, there could have been some politics in the background of all this, but I'm not real clear between the Dominicans and the Franciscans, and all of a sudden this gal is walking around preaching and having this book. And the book is not written as normal ones are. All the normal books were written in Latin, so that it was a universal thing. Hers was written in what's called Old French. And so it was very readable to those who she gave it to, um, but also it, it was considered almost a violation. So that there had to be a concept at that time that the educated people would be talking to others, and they, they were the ones who knew. Um, and the problem you run into with this is when you say, in any way that you know God, you're on kind of shaky ground. And so for us who like to think we, we know a bit of God, we are very hesitant to say that what we are saying is right and what they are saying is wrong. God is so incomprehensible that to draw lines or to put boxes in is quite dangerous. But clearly, uh, the bishops of the day uh, were in that mode. Um, so she goes to trial. She's arrested and she goes to trial. They analyze her book and there's a lot of poetic language. And in poetic language, it's not too hard to take things out of context. So they made a list of 15 things she said wrong. And uh, as they're looking at her, and she was arrested with another gentleman. I don't recall his name, but they were both arrested. He, uh, he confessed and said, okay, well, if this is all wrong, I give up, whatever. Uh, she wasn't quite so bending as that. She said, no, I've, I've had good experiences with God. She seemed so genuinely, um, I, don't know, I don't know what the right word for it is, but genuinely strong in her faith and this feeling of a sense of God that uh, she didn't recant at all. They wanted her to recant and say, hey, she's sorry, and that uh, she shouldn't do that, and whatever they say is right, and she shouldn't do this, because partially she's a woman. Um, but they convicted her, and there's, I think, 15 or something guys on the council that voted to convince her. But the gentleman arrested with her went to prison because he recanted and confessed or whatever. She, because she didn't, was burned. She was burned at the stake. It's hard to imagine that today, and yet uh, it is easy to imagine that we exclude other people, uh, whether they're following Muhammad or they're following this or following that. We condemn a lot of people, um, 
in the old days when I was a kid, even Protestants were considered very questionable people. Um, we're getting a little better view of that now. Uh, in the um, Gaudium et Spes, a Vatican document, uh, which is considered the constitution of the church, they call the church the people of God. And this becomes much more all-inclusive. And the fact that someone can directly connect with God at the core of my soul, and this is kind of a, there was a master, Meister Eichhardt, and he kind of has a similar type of concept, that at the core of my soul is sitting on a ground. And that ground is the same ground on which God is sitting. And so down inside of ourselves, we have this shared connection with our God. And uh, we have to be humble about that, but still being connected with our God is a powerful thing. And to recognize that and appreciate it oh, can mean a lot. Um, to say that we have everything right today, um, I think might be a little major assumption, uh, especially when we look at the faults looking back. 1300 is what, 600 years ago or something. Um, yeah, we say, oh, well, look at how foolish they were. Well, in 600 years from now, they'd be looking at us and saying that some of our assumptions, some of our ways of rejecting other people <laughs> are also uh, not quite on task. So let's be accepting today. Uh, let's pray in a way in which we close off and we do connect with the fact that our soul is on the ground of the same ground on which God is resting. That brings us closer to him and allows us to connect with him and to connect with others through rituals, through church, through just being with other people. In all these good connections, we're getting closer to God. Let us enjoy that and let us enjoy it today.